Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're making crème brûlée. Um, I mentioned in my video about uh, heavy cream and also I talked about it in the video about eggs. Um, how simple it is and it's one of my my all-time favorite and it's very easy to make uh, well. Uh, it actually only takes four ingredients. There's nothing more basic. There's sugar, heavy cream, egg yolks, and vanilla. The first step, because we're going to bake this in the oven in a water bath, uh, you might be listening on, uh, on my left um, water boiling. So I boiled about two liters of water and it's going to be ready in a minute. You also need to preheat your oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit if uh, um, you don't have a convection oven. But if you have convection, you can go to 320, uh, 3, 325 Fahrenheit, which is about 160 degrees Celsius. So uh, what do you need for creme brulee? First of all, you're going to need some creme brulee ramekins. And what I have here in front of me, actually, I'm going to show you. I have a couple of different types and shape. You have the shallow, large base type pan, uh, ramekin that actually we're going to use today. But you also have the more deep dish type ramekins. You have tiny ones um, and so on and so forth. So they have different properties. Uh, obviously, the small ones are going to cook faster. Um, and the difference between these two, well, these are like kind of the two main shape that you see uh, in restaurant. Um, this one is going to bake faster because it has a much uh, wider surface. Uh, and <laughs> you can also put more caramel on top because you have more larger surface. surface. This one is a little bit deeper. Uh, the benefit of this is it's going to Take a, well, it's going to take a little bit longer to, to bake, but the inside, in my opinion, ends up being creamier because there's more uh, uh, th th there's more there's more uh, uh, cream, uh, there's more thickness, and so it ends up being uh, creamier. This one is fairly shallow, so <laughs> when you when you when you grab some of the cream with your spoon, you you get to the bottom of the pan real quickly. Um, but anyway, we're going to use this today. Uh, and we're going to make 10 of those. I'm going to put this aside. So <laughs> the question is, how much cream do you need? And that entirely depends on your ramekins. So this recipe is actually going to be a multiple of this container, this ramekin. And based on the ones you have, it's going to change. And, and I'm glad that we're able to cover this uh, recipe early on this channel because this is going to be a great, a great case study for the metric system and how great it is in terms of, of simplicity and, and scalability. So how, do you, how does it work? Um, basically, you figure out what type of ramekin you want to use and then you're going to put it on your scale here. Let's open this carton of heavy cream and uh, I'll explain to you in a minute uh, what we need to do after we open it. Uh, by the way, I'll add a link to the, the, um, the video I did on heavy cream here at the top right corner to explain the difference between all the different types of heavy cream and what you need to, uh, to worry about. So I don't know if the, you can see from the light here, you see some of the fat solid that, that are sticking to the carton like we're gonna have to scrape that off and 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 uh, make sure that it's added to our mixture but first things first here uh, you want to know how much cream can one of your ramekin hold right and so you tear it there we go pour some in it all the way almost all the way to the top there we go. And it's, a, well, it's about like 110 here, but I, I, I'm going to stop at 
at actually at 90 grams because we're going to add sugar and we're going to add egg yolks but basically it gives you an idea of how much weight uh, you're gonna of cream you're gonna have in each of your ramekins um, so I'm only gonna put 90 grams I went a little, a little bit too high and um, and then just multiply by 10 because I'm making 10 of these right so I'm gonna put this back in and then I'm gonna pour 900 grams of cream in there that includes everything here all right for 50 and then as i mentioned make sure that you grab all of this fat here this is this is what makes it good all right don't forget this otherwise you're missing out what i should have done and i'm going to do with the the second one is uh, make sure that I shake it before I open it. Try to don't shake it too much. You don't you don't want to whip it. All right, my oven's ready. All right, let's open the second one. And here again, you can see the fat, the cream that we're going to have to, to get from the carton. All right, 900. I'm going to go all the way to, to almost a kilo. I'm going to explain how the rest of the recipe works. All right. So I have all the, the cream here that I got from the from the box. There we go. Nine hundred and thirty. Yeah, nine hundred thirty. Um, it was reading more earlier because I forgot I had the spoon in it. So, how does it work? Um, how much sugar do I need to put in there? Um, how much egg yolks? Um, so the way this works, it's always going to be a percentage of your cream weight, right? So I have. Uh, 930 grams of cream here which I'm gonna set aside and then I need 15% of sugar so 15% by weight it's about about 135 or 140 grams of sugar Let's do 140, right? And for the egg yolks, it's between 17 and 18% by weight. So it's a little bit more than the sugar, but not by much. So I'm gonna do one, let's do, let's do 160, 160 grams. And then, so that's kind of the, the, the ballpark estimate, 160 or uh, grams approximately, between 150 and 160. And then it's up to you to decide. You can try the recipe with 150, let's do a little bit more, 155. Um, and if you feel it's not uh, the, the the egg flavor is not pronounced enough for you. You can you can add more. And by the way, that's one of the benefit of using these uh, liquid egg products 
liquid egg yolks is you don't have to crack eggs and you're not wasting egg whites, especially when you only need the yolk. Unfortunately, you have to get those at a restaurant supply store because they're not sold in regular supermarkets. So in addition to, um, so we done what? The cream, the egg yolks, and the sugar. And I said that the only thing missing is the vanilla. And for this, I'm gonna try to use my micro scale because I usually eyeball it, but just for the purpose of this video, um, I'm gonna try to figure out like how much I uh, usually add. I, I'm willing to bet that it's around 0.1% by weight. So basically one gram per kilo of cream. But let's see, let's see. Usually, like I add 1%, that might not be enough. Let's do 2%. More vanilla is better. I put too much. That's three grams. Yeah, that's that's too much. All right, one seventy. There we go. One ninety. So that's roughly, roughly, zero two percent by weight, right? And so this is the vanilla powder that I'm going to add directly into into the cream. So you add it to the cream because now I'm going to slowly warm up my cream on low heat. And we add the vanilla to the cream to um, infuse it. So basically to enhance the vanilla flavor. In the meantime, I'm going to start creaming the eggs, so the egg yolks with the sugar. And when you pour uh, sugar on egg, egg yolks or eggs in general, uh, don't let them sit and, and not do anything with it. They're gonna, otherwise the sugar is going to burn the eggs. So as soon as you add the sugar to the eggs, just mix it in, make sure that the sugar doesn't fly away um, and then you can start whipping it this is looking good That's about one minute of whipping. Just to give you an idea of the texture. Very, very creamy. Now I'm gonna set that aside and pay attention to the cream. And grabbing a small whisk here, make sure that the vanilla is well mixed with the cream and also one of the benefit of warming up the cream and i'm going to check the temperature make sure it doesn't go over 60 degrees right now we're good we're still at about 20 degrees celsius and when i say 60 degrees 60 degrees celsius it's about 140 something fahrenheit i think So one of the reasons why we we warm up the cream is one to melt the fat solids that you you've seen in seen in the in the, in the box, um, and the second one is as I mentioned to help infuse uh, and enhance the vanilla flavor. So I'm gonna raise, raise the temperature uh, the the heat a little bit. Maybe I was a little bit too conservative. And again, like we're not uh, we're not cooking or boiling the cream. Uh, we're just warming it up. Make sure that 
it doesn't boil because we're going to pour it into the eggs and the eggs will coagulate at about 68 degrees Celsius or 140 or 50 something Fahrenheit. Uh, so never go above that temperature for the cream. Let me check the temperature one more time. All right, we're good. I'm turning it off. So that's it. Eggs on one side, cream in the other, sugar. We're gonna slowly add our cream to our egg mixture and mix everything. see all the vanilla seeds are at the bottom of the pan so make sure you grab them all and you see that like the cream is actually not burned important like we just warmed it up remember I, I know I repeat myself but it's it's very important don't cook the eggs here between the egg yolks and the cream, we, should, we are at like about 28 degrees Celsius right now, like 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're well below um, the egg coagulation temperature, right? So now our mixture is ready. And I'll see you in a minute to pour everything into the ramekins. All right, we're back. So we're all set up for to pour the creme into the ramekins. And you need a deep uh, roasting pan that will hold so all the ramekins you want to bake and will hold the water for the water bath. And to pour the cream, you just basically either need a, a, a lot of like, utensil like this or you can grab beaker um, whatever you prefer make sure you don't make any splashes but basically grab this you see it's very very runny and after baking exactly what happens is the it's gonna thicken obviously so what's 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 the thickening agent here uh, the thickening agent is the egg yolks and more specifically the egg lecithin will under heat will basically act as a very potent thickener. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour some of that mixture in each of the ramekins. And you can go all the way to the top. Uh, this is not going to rise in the oven. Uh, to the contrary, it's actually going to lose some of the volume because some of the water content is going to evaporate. So you, to make sure <laughs> that the creme brulee are full at the end of the baking process, you it, it's better to actually fill them out all the way to the top, which is going to be a, the, the the challenge is actually then to to carry this carry this into into the oven without spilling anything um, and after we put this in the oven then we're going to add the the, the boiling water for for the water bath all right we're almost done here I'm going another round making sure everything is full now something else you can do so this is the classic version the creme brulee with simply just vanilla and and, and sugar uh, but you can be you can be more creative uh, you can add uh, frozen berries right before baking here you can add uh, you can flavor it basically the way you want you can add uh, uh, green tea. I mean, you can, you, can, you can be really crazy if you want. 
All right. Um, I think this one, this one's missing a little bit of cream, so I'm gonna grab some elsewhere. All right. I want to make sure everybody has the same quantity. I think we're about right now. I think we're good. I think we look good. So one thing you can do, it's a little bit of a, because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and I want to get rid of all these air bubbles, uh, is actually use the, the torch that I'm gonna, the torch I'm going to use later to caramelize the creme brulee. I uh, also use it to just give it a, a quick blast on top, just to pop all the, all the air bubbles. So we're not cooking anything here, we're just, uh, just getting rid of the air bubbles. Now you can see how the surface is very, very smooth and it's gonna give um, a very, very smooth um, skin on top of your creme brulee. Now I'm gonna pop these into the oven and then we're, we're going to pour uh, the water, the water, the boiling water after that uh, it's in the oven. I'll see you in a minute. That's it. So after you carried this into the oven, uh, let the roasting pan stick out a little bit and then use the water that you boiled and then just pour it slowly in one corner, making sure uh, that you're not splashing water into the creme brulee. And you should see the water level slowly rising. The goal is to go almo almost all the way to the edge of the creme brulee, but not, not completely, maybe three quarters of the way because the water is going to boil and you don't want to be basically the, 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 the water bubbles to spill over your creme brulee. So I think, I think we might be good now. Um, maybe a, a little bit more. I don't know if you can see the, the water level, but it's, it's pretty much like three quarters of the way up. Now I'm going to push this in. Slowly. And bake for about 30 minutes. Now, uh, it's going to depend on your oven. It's going to depend on a lot of things. Uh, usually what I do is I come back after about 15 minutes um, and the, the, the key point, the turning point here is when the water bath starts boiling again inside the oven. And when I see that it's boiling, I just let it bake for another 15 minutes uh, and then it's going to be good. So we'll check back after the water starts boiling again. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can see that the water bath is now boiling inside the oven. This is 15 minutes later. Um, maybe it was boiling a little bit earlier, but uh, I set a timer to 15 minutes to check to make sure it was boiling. And I'm going to wait another 15 minutes. So overall, uh, it's going to bake for 30 minutes. I'll see you in a bit. So that's it. It's been uh, 30 minutes now. The way you can check that this is cooked is take a fork, just shake one of the ramekin and you see it, you see this like jello texture. It's no longer runny. That means it's ready. So I'm gonna take them out of the oven and then uh, place them on a cooling rack before uh, putting them in the fridge. I'll see you in a second. That's it. So after you take it out from the oven, uh, be very careful. It's hot. Uh, and we're going to take those out of the roasting pan and put them on the cooling rack. And by the way, I don't know if you can see from the, uh, from the camera. Uh, and this is very hot. 
but they, they look very dark. So I, I was a little bit surprised. I thought that it was um, uh, burnt or that it was, the, I failed the recipe. <laughs> but it, the problem, or it's not a problem, but the thing is the dark that you see on top is actually vanilla seeds. Um, and so originally I thought if in, in, in my memory, I said I would probably, I should probably add a 0.1% of vanilla per, um, uh, per cream. So basically one gram per kilo of cream. And I think I was right. I, I added two, but it might have been a little bit too much. So instead of two grams or 1.8 in this case, I added, I should probably, next time I'll probably go around like between one and 1.2 grams of vanilla. I mean, it's, there's nothing wrong about this. Um, it's going to taste great, but I clearly over did it. It's not supposed to be dark like this. So I'll edit the, I'll add some warning at the start of the video. Um, to tell people to add less vanilla because it went all the way to the top. And now I let it cool down before putting everything uh, in the fridge. And uh, depending on what you have in your fridge, you're gonna have to cover these creams, either in a container or more likely with a plastic film. So why do you cover it? Because uh, if you have anything else in your fridge, like cheese or meat or fish, whatever, the, the cream is gonna absorb that um, odor. And you obviously don't want um, like salmon creme brulee or Parmesan creme brulee. Uh, you wanna make sure that now it's, it's no longer warm but um, so you want to make sure that they're well insulated from anything that could potentially have a strong flavor any any fat based product will fix odors in your fridge so that's why we, um, we have butter box and uh, butter milk cream and so on and so forth, cheese will fix odor from anything else that's in your fridge. So right now they're way too hot. I'm gonna let them cool down and uh, rest in the fridge. Again, this is uh, something that is going to have to rest overnight in the fridge to set. Um, you can usually start eating them at around about the four, six hour mark. Like if you make them in the morning, you can probably eat them in the evening. But in my opinion, it, it's, it gets creamier and creamier the, the longer you wait. So I recommend uh, doing this um, the, the, the day before and let them rest in the fridge overnight. As you can see, this is, well, well this one is quite hot. Um, I'm going to show you again one last time the texture that you should be looking for. So there's a little bit of a jiggle, jiggle, wiggle, 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 right? That's what you're looking for. And so depending on your oven, depending on how accurate the measurements are, and, um, and also depending on your taste, like depending on how creamy or how um, uh, set you like it, you might increase the time to bake by five. Uh, you might remove or add five minutes depending on your taste. But based on my oven, this is what works for me. And based on this container, oh yeah, I forgot to, to say that. It also depends on the size of your ramekins, um, as I said already, uh, in the introduction. So that's it. I'm gonna let those uh, rest in the fridge overnight. And tomorrow there's gonna be some caramel action. See you tomorrow, bye. Welcome back and let's finish these creme brulee. As I mentioned in the previous video, so they've rest uh, for like about overnight in the fridge, but they will last a couple of days. 
Um, they're a little bit darker than I anticipated, but as I mentioned, it's because I added too much vanilla, so it's not a problem. It should look different differently uh, when you make it. So last step is about caramelizing. It's kind of the 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 cherry on top, if I if I if I may say so. And the way it works is you always have to do it at the last minute. Um, this is one of the key. Uh, appeal, I would say, of the creme brulee is when you do the caramelization right before eating it, and when you bite into it, you have this uh, like symphony of contrast, like between the hot and cold, the crunchy and creamy, black and white, uh, bitter and sweet, uh, and you have everything at the same time in a very simple dessert. So the way it works is, um, I usually add like a lot of sugar and and then I remove it. So I add a lot on top just to make sure it covers everything. And then I remove the excess, right? So you have your first, kind of your first layer of sugar. There's a little bit missing here. Just making sure it goes uh, everywhere. There we go. And then you remove the excess. And after you're, 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 you're done that, then I add a little bit more, like a very thin, layer. There we go. So not too much. Next step, torch. So a quick word on this torch. Um, this, this is a professional torch and I highly recommend getting one <laughs> for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, like, it is actually cheaper than most home kitchen torch that you can see in stores or like fancy stores like William Sonoma or Sterlat Tab, where sometimes like the tiny little torch uh, would run like for 30, 40, 50 bucks. Um, so yeah, I, I do not recommend those torches. It's, it's just a gimmick, it's just a toy. Uh, get a professional grade torch. And the way it works is you actually buy the head separately. Um, so you just buy the head. This one is, is actually very inexpensive. It's about like 12 bucks on Amazon. And you buy the can separately. And you can find those butane cans uh, in food service stores, like restaurant supply stores, or even um, REI, like um, outdoor uh, camping, hiking stores, because these cans are used for camping, um, grills as well. So, and it's, they're fairly inexpensive. It's about two bucks for one can. So I paid eight bucks for, for four. So again, $12 for the head, $2 for the can, and it'll last a long time. There's no real reason to get a cheap, uh, supposedly s s kitchen torch that you're gonna pay 50 bucks for it. So there you go. I'll add some links in the description down below. So after you're done covering your creme brulee with sugar, uh, you have to be careful to do it quickly and make sure that you caramelize the, the, the creme brulee evenly in about like 10, 15 seconds. Why? Because I just took this out of the fridge. So the, the cream is very cold right now and you just want to caramelize the top and keep your cream cold. If you if you spend too much time with the torch on the creme brulee, you're gonna just basically melt the cream beneath. So let's turn it on and go all the way around, making sure you're melting everything. In a, and as soon as you don't see white anymore and the entire surface of the creme brulee is bubbling, it's done. There you go. So it took about 10 seconds, I would say. Now, the caramel right now is still very hot, but it hasn't set yet, right? Um, and we're gonna have to wait for maybe another 10, 15 seconds before we can eat the creme brulee. But you see how, how shiny and uniform it is. So as I mentioned, it's very important to 
make sure you go around the creme brulee. Like you, you keep the torch moving and you never leave the flame in one spot. Otherwise you're gonna burn your caramel, all right? You need even an even color, like even browning all around the surface of the creme brulee. Now, if I take that spoon and I see that it's slowly getting harder and harder, but I'm going to wait before the final step. I'll see you in a sec. This is it. Final step, eating the creme brulee. I have to say that first, um, as I'm looking into the, the camera right now, I see that the creme brulee is very dark, but it's just because my kitchen counter is white. So the camera is trying to adjust the, the white balance. Um, it's actually a lot more caramel if I get closer. Um, and it just looks beautiful, right? So now the next step is uh, kind of the ASMR section of the video where you can hear the caramel. And then you just bite into it. Let me make sure that you hear the caramel because this is kind of the appeal of the creme brulee. So I'm going to take my, my mic here and make sure that you hear it well. I shouldn't do this on camera. Mm. This is not PG-13. Yeah, so as I mentioned, I was talking earlier about the contrast in a creme brulee. I think there's nothing um, simpler that has so much contrast in it. So you see the contrast in color, obviously, between the cream, the white cream and the caramel top. The caramel, that's a little bit bitter, and the cream, that's sweet. The difference in temperature with the hot caramel on top and the very cold cream at the bottom. And then obviously the texture when you eat the cream and the caramel layer on top at the same time. I mean, honestly, so simple, so delicious. Hmm. There you go. That's the recipe. Let me know how it goes in the comments down below. And feel free to subscribe with the subscribe button to get notified for new recipes. Thank you so much.